It's my honor this morning if you could join me in welcoming Dr. Sigum Antonios and Sister Saba. As you already know, uh, Africa is facing a serious challenge by uh, Western nations which are demanding for African nations to accept the uh, homosexual agenda. And we Africans will make Africa a graveyard for homosexuality. Africa will be a graveyard for the homosexual agenda. The following presentation by Dr. Sayum Antonios was given at the Campus Crusade for Christ-sponsored Pomoja 3 conference near Lagos, Nigeria on January 1, 2013. Dr. Antonios is currently leading an effort in Ethiopia to institute the death penalty for homosexuality. Introducing Antonios was Bekele Shanko, Vice President of Global Church Movements for Campus Crusade for Christ. With an annual budget of over $500 million per year, Campus Crusade for Christ is one of the biggest evangelical ministries on earth. Campus Crusade has a presence on over 1,600 campuses and aggressively evangelizes in the U.S. military, including in the Pentagon. Christianity. They have three beautiful girls, and it's my honor this morning if you could join me in welcoming Dr. Sigum Antonios and Sister Saba. It's a great honor for us to be here amongst you uh, this morning. And uh, I believe uh, it's not something uh, made by human hands that we are speaking on the first day of the year, the new year. And uh, I believe it's prophetic the message which we are going to present to you this morning is a crucial one which Africa needs to listen to at this very moment. And uh, the very fact that I'm speaking about it on the first day of this new year by itself uh, has a great sig significance. I believe Africa needs to listen to this voice from heaven and act upon it. And uh, besides me, uh, you'll, you see my <clears throat> beautiful wife, uh, Saba. Her name, Saba, means Sheba, the biblical queen of Sheba. So uh, she's my queen. And uh, if she's a queen, you can guess who I am. <laughs> so uh, I'm honored uh, by her. Uh, uh, and by my uh, three beautiful daughters. So uh, God bless you all for being with us this morning. So I'll continue with my presentation.
I think it's a revelation for sure. Let me start by reading a, a verse from the book of Psalms, uh, Psalm 123. This is a, a psalm that was given to us as we departed from Addis. And I would like us to read it first in the heavenly language, Amharic. And uh, I'll then read it in English. Uh, it says, in, I'll read it in Amharic. I know there are some of you who will understand me. It says, Besamai Zufanla Yetak Amet Hoi, I know Chin Wedanta Anasalo, Yabarauch, I know the Gitacho Ech, Yabaraitum, I know the Mabito Ach in the Mimelekat, Meretz Kamiadar Gilindres, Yam, I know Chwedam Lakachin, Wedexiabir, Yimelekatalu, Exiabir Hoi, Nick at Bestopinalina, Maren, Abak Maren, Nefsachin Yak and Och Sidib, Yetebitanyochum Nick at Ejig Bestop Battle. I'll read it in English. I think uh, it's very timely for the continent of Africa. It says, I lift up my eyes to you, to you whose throne is in heaven. As the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid look to the eyes of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us. For we have endured much contempt. We have endured much ridicule from the proud, much contempt from the arrogant. This morning I'll be talking on two very important issues. The first of uh, them being the issue of homosexuality. As you already know, uh, Africa is facing a serious challenge by uh, Western nations which are demanding for African nations to accept the uh, homosexual agenda in the name of human rights. So uh, I'll directly go to the slides uh, for the sake of time. And I hope you can see uh, the slides clearly. Uh, I ask uh, the media people to, uh, I mean, put out some of the lights so that the uh, people can easily see the slides. About their hidden practices. Because they say, I, quote unquote, they say, uh, if we tell what we are doing in secret, it's like giving a stick for our uh, opponents with a stick with which they will beat us that's what they are saying but god has, since god has given given us the mandate to expose that we will expose it next slide uh, the whole homosexual lifestyle is based on the idea of promiscuity there is so much promiscuity in the homosexual lifestyle next slide Next, and uh, uh, a far-ranging, uh, uh, far-ranging uh, study of homosexual people have shown that they are involved in so much uh, uh, promiscuity that they are exposed to different kinds of diseases. Next slide. Uh, Fifteen percent uh, of homosexuals claim that they have sexual relationships with at least 100 to 250 people. A person has sexual relationship at least with 250 people. And another 17% have sexual relationship be between uh, 250 to 500 people. And another 15% uh, uh, claim that they have sexual relationship 
with people up to a thousand in number. So there is so much sexual promiscuity. And here you see a picture of the lower part of our gastrointestinal system. This is what's known as the rectum and the anal canal. I brought this picture to tell you one fact. Next slide. Uh, about 99% of homosexual people practice what's known as anal, I mean oral penile sex. Oral penile sex. And, and a further 91% of homosexuals they are engaged in, the next slide, they are engaged in, uh, next slide, they are engaged in what's known as uh, anal sex. They use the lower part of uh, the gastrointestinal tract for sex, but it's a clear fact that any medical textbook doesn't at all say that this part of our body is made for sexual contact. It's not a sexual organ. I mean, the anal canal, the anus is not a sexual organ. No medical textbook talks about that. Next slide. And next, next. Continue. As you can see, uh, 110 Sexual, uh, 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 one study showed that an average of 110 sexual encounters are uh, done in people with, uh, with homosexual lifestyle. And the next slide, please. And 83% of uh, homosexuals are engaged in what's known as reaming or analingus. Reaming means somebody leaking the anal canal of or the anal opening of his partner. And in that process, they insert their tongue and eat part of or uh, a considerable amount of feces as well. Here I have brought to you a bestseller book, a bestseller book which is entitled uh, the Joy of Gay Sex. It's a bestseller in America. And if you read it, it will say reaming, meaning leaking the anal opening of a sexual partner is the best test treating sex. Can you believe that? How can somebody leaking uh, his partner's uh, uh, anal canal consider that act the best test treat? This is unbelievable. Next slide. And 22% of homosexuals enjoy what's known as fisting. Fisting mean, means inserting the, uh, uh, the arm of uh, a partner into the anal opening. And uh, du during that kind of uh, interactions, sometimes they insert two or three arms into that small opening just to get sexual satisfaction. The next slide. And 23% of homosexuals admitted to what's known as golden showers. Golden showers meaning uh, somebody urinating on the body of uh, his partner. You can see it in the coming pictures. Look, this, this is what's known as urine sex. Urine sex means somebody opens his mouth and his partner urinates in his mouth. I have some more. Just uh, uh, golden showers. Golden showers, as you can see in the uh, coming picture. Next week, continue, please. Here you can see somebody lying naked and his partner urinating upon his body. I can show it in a movie. Continue with the slides, please. Okay, you, here you can see, no, the previous slide, yeah. Here you can see, click it, please. Here you can see somebody opening his mouth and drinking the urine of his partner. And 
Here is what's known as golden shower. Somebody taking shower with urine. And they call it golden shower. Because they, the color of some uh, urine is golden. This is abominable. Now, there are also drinks made with the taste of urine. Okay, the next slide. Next slide. There is also what's known as fecal sex. Fecal sex. Or scat, meaning somebody eating the feces of his partner. I know you're, you'll be sick, but I want you to be sick. You must be sick, because we are sick and tired of this, uh, uh, this kind of practice coming to us in the name of human rights. This is what's known as fecal sex. They eat, practically eat. Yeah, look. And this is what is their, what is their hidden practice is, really is. Continue with the slide. Even females eating feces. Should Africa tolerate this? No. Should Africa tolerate this? No. Africa has no shoulder to carry this. Amen? We will not tolerate this kind of practice in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This is an abomination in the sight of God. This is a clear abomination in the sight of God. Next slide, please. Next slide. Romans 1.28 clearly says, clearly says that since they did not think it worthwhile to retain even over to a depraved mind. The other slide. The next slide. There is also what they call... Uh, uh, insertion of foreign bodies into the rectum. They, they say they get sexual satisfaction by insertion of foreign bodies. For example, here you can see carrots taken out from the lower GI tract of a uh, homosexual man. A big carrot. Look, a bulb, an incandescent bulb. And look, another foreign body taken out from a homosexual. Look, you can see test tubes test tubes and also we can see cassette tape cassette is it, do we have a player inside our body no but they insert the tape look they insert even animals can you believe that animals this is uh, uh, an animal a type of fish called eel and it measures about please yeah bring it again it measures about half a meter. A 50-year-old uh, homosexual man inserted it into his anal canal to get sexual satisfaction. But this eel or this fish went up, and in the next slide you, you will see that it got hold of the colonic wall, and it couldn't go out by itself. So he had to be operated on to get it out. In that, during that process, you can see a hole, a hole which the eel made because it, uh, it beats part of the wall. So they insert even rats, mice, into their uh, lower anal canal. This is their hidden practice. Look a bottle, a Pepsi bottle, inside the lower anal canal. What does a bottle do there? Does it belong there? Africa, does it belong there? No, no it doesn't belong there. We, that's not the way God ordained us to live. The next slide, please. And they also put pieces of bones in their urethra, I mean the urinary tract. Pieces of bones, pencils, pen, wire, and also needle. Can you believe that? They put that. Continue. Next slide. And the Bible clearly says in Ephesians 4.19 that having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. It's a, a cycle. 
It's a cycle. They do one thing, they don't get satisfied, so they try another thing, though. It's a vicious circle of depravity. And <clears throat> the, the, the other, <clears throat> excuse me, the other practice is bestiality. They don't stop with human beings, they go to animals. And 20% of homosexuals practice sex with animals, which is abhorrent as written in the word of God. And 33% of homosexuals are pedophiles. Pedophiles. They don't, there is a, 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 an organization in the US called NAMBLA, North American Boy uh, and Man Love Association. You know what its, its motto is? Sex before eight, before it's too late. Meaning, we should have sex with children below the age of eight years before they grow up. This is its motto. Sex before eight, before it's too late. It's a group of pedophiles. Next slide, please. There's what's known as sadomasochism. They also have uh, this kind of practice, inflicting so much pain on their bodies to get sexual satisfaction. And to 22 to 37 percent of homosexuals have such kind of uh, practice. And uh, to, to show it to you in, in pictures, continue please. These are some of their practices. Pouring out a melted candle on their bodies to get satisfactions. What they call sexual satisfaction. Next slide. Look, beating somebody naked is a way of getting sexual satisfaction. And also, stabbing someone with a knife is a way of getting sexual satisfaction for them. And also, uh, yeah, look, look at it. Look, somebody being <laughs> beaten naked and pouring out a, a melted candle. This is how they think they will get sexual satisfaction. Next slide. This is some of their practices. Continue with the slides, please. How can somebody get, look, this is the, ne the previous slide. This is how they uh, think they get sexual satisfaction, by strangulation. Strangulating someone with a rope and asphyxiating him, they say will give him sexual satisfaction. You know, some of them die in that process. And in fact, this is a poster saying, please come, it's a breathtaking experience, come and enjoy it. Next slide. And uh, over, continue with the slides, please. Next slide. And there's what's known as uh, uh, orgy, which is a group sex, which they perform exchanging one another. Next slide. Now, what do lesbians do? Uh, they also have their sex toys. They also do the previous uh, acts, but they also have their sex toys. Ne next slide. These are the, some of their sexual toys, which they use to uh, satisfy themselves. They use even carrots, candles. They insert them into their uh, uh, vaginal tract to get sexual satisfaction. By the way, this is not a promotion. I'm just telling you what they are doing. Don't try it. Next slide. They also uh, change themselves from male to female. What they, they are called transgenders. And you'll see some very uh, amazing pictures of people being changed. A futile journey from the natural man to an artificial woman. For example, here you can see a man changed into a woman. He says, I was a woman born into a man's body. Can you believe that? Does our God do that? Does he create a man in a female's body? Never. Our Bible doesn't at all say that. Next slide. Look. They do a cosmetic surgery and they insert breast implants and then uh, they create what's known as an artificial woman. Other slides. Look. All these are men changed into females. Next slide, quick, continue. These are all males changed into female. 
look, please don't uh, uh, involve yourselves in internet dating. You may come across men who have changed into women. And you may find a beautiful picture and you may say the beautiful female and engage in homosexual activity. Continue, next slide. <clears throat> and there are also women who change, who, change, who change themselves into men, artificial men. They uh, take out their breasts through uh, cosmetic surgery and change into what, an artificial man. Continue with the slides, please. Look, can you believe that these are females? They look more male than me. <laughs> look, look this man. In fact, he looks more male than you, some of you. The next slide. Look, here they also engage in what, um, marriage ceremonies. There is a man changed into a, a woman and marrying another man, claiming that he's um, a female. So uh, they, they also change children, you know. This is a male child changed into a female. They say, since he's CC, we have to change him as soon as possible. Next slide. Another child. Now, what are the side effects? If homosexuality was natural, a natural phenomenon, if it had been God-ordained, it wouldn't have any uh, health hazards. But the uh, uh, research facts which I'm going to sh show you will clearly depict that homosexuality is an abomination and a serious public health issue. And continue with the slides, please. One of its side effects, hemorrhoids. Most homosexuals suffer from this kind of problem, a swelling of the lower uh, GI vessels. Next slide. Continue with the slides, please. They also have uh, anal cancer. They uh, contract anal cancer. This is uh, what's known as fistula, perianal fistula, an opening beside the anal canal, fistula in ano. And the next slide shows you uh, the anal cancer. And you know, continue please. There is a risk, 84 times increased risk of contracting anal cancer in homosexual practice. Two studies have shown that. 25 to 50 times, I didn't say person, times increase in anal cancer rate. Another study, a recent one, showed 84 times increase in anal cancer. Don't use a body part for a purpose which it is not created for. God has assigned a specific function for each part of our body. If you use it otherwise, then here is the consequence. The anal canal is not a sexual organ. I repeat, the anal canal is not a sexual organ. I repeat it, be I repeat it because it is even a practice among Christians nowadays. We are coming across many Christians, couples, practicing such kind of activities. This is an abomination. This is a homosexual lifestyle. The next slide. The other hazard is anal incontinence. If you use the anal canal, it will eventually become incontinent. It cannot contain, it cannot contain the fecal, uh, uh, the feces of the person until he reaches the uh, toilet. So he will be leaking for life. So what, what they do is they use diapers, like children. Here is a person using diapers. The other thing they do is uh, they all, yeah, look, a person using a diaper, an adult man, because his anal canal is incontinent. So they will have leakage for life. Next. They also, as I said, insert bottles, carrots, even small animals. We have already talked about that. There is also a danger of a tear for the lower GI tract. When they insert different foreign bodies, the lower GI tract will be torn. And because of this 
many have died because of bleeding and infection. Next slide. Uh, Seventy percent of homosexuals contract hepatitis through their sexual practice. Hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Continue. And female uh, uh, homosexuals, which we call lesbians, have, uh, th this is not a lesbian, by the way, this is a researcher, Dr. Susan Haynes. Next slide. She has found out that 33% of uh, lesbians get breast cancer. Breast cancer. A three to four times increase in the risk of breast cancer for lesbians. Why? Because uh, a pregnancy by itself has a protective effect against breast cancer, which many women do not know. So when lesbians uh, uh, deliberately refuse to bear child, this is one of the consequences. It's a proven fact. The other is uh, uh, a certain, continue, please. And the other is uh, a 50%, 55% uh, increase in syphilis, syphilis. And in fact, in, among homosexuals, syphilis is an epidemic, an epidemic. Next slide, please. And uh, one third of homosexuals have what's known as anorectal herpes simplex virus. It's also a cause for the anal cancer. Continue. And you know, uh, our human ejaculate, our semen has uh, an immunosuppressive effect, which God ha purposely put into it. But when it is spilled over in some, somewhere out of the female reproductive tract, it causes immune suppression. When somebody uh, has an uh, 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 anal uh, contact, uh, sexual contact, then the semen that spilled in the uh, GI tract, the gastrointestinal tract, will get into the blood and reduces the immune system, the immunocompetency. Uh, uh, so the patient easily, the person easily gets diseases. Next slide. These are some of the diseases. In fact, may continue. Yeah. These are all the diseases that come because of uh, anal sexual contact, anal cancer, uh, chlamydia, trachomatis, giardia lamblia, herpes simplex, continue with the next slide. All these diseases come because of anal sexual contact. So let's stand up and fight this abominable practice. This is not God ordained. It has come to, uh, uh, to kill us. Definitely. So we have to stop it. We have to fight and uh, push it away. Next slide. Gay bowel syndrome is another consequence. We, uh, uh, people who engage themselves in such type of activity develop this disease, meaning it's a group of diseases affecting the rectum. Many diseases, amoebiasis, giardiasis, and so on. And there is what's known as gonococcal proctitis, meaning gonorrhea of the GI tract, the rectum, and syphilis of the rectum. This is un unthinkable for uh, any other human being. But in, in homosexuals, they contract uh, syphilis of the throat, gonorrhea of the throat, because they practice what's known as sucking. The other hazard, as I said, is hepatitis and HIV AIDS. Please continue. And the, as you can see from this graph, this is a CDC report, 61% uh, of uh, new HIV infections are caused by anal sex, by anal sex. So if we are serious to reduce the risk of uh, uh, acquiring HIV AIDS, we have to fight this kind of practice. It's the main cause, even more than the heterosexual sexual practice. Next slide. And uh, uh, please continue, 30 times increased risk of HIV AIDS. Continue, please. And it also causes depression. Many, many uh, homosexuals are depression. We have counseled a number of them, and 
Almost all of them are suffering from depression. They don't like the lifestyle they are in. Uh, they are 15 times more likely to commit murder than non-homosexuals. So they are violent in their practice. This is a picture of homosexual men and a woman who have been uh, convicted of serial uh, murder. They are serial killers. The sanctity of marriage is also defiled. And uh, here they are uh, demonstrating, saying we have to have the freedom to marry. But as you can see with the next slide, there are two men marrying one another who you don't know which one is a wife. Can you tell? It's impossible. Here, here is an 80-year-old woman marrying a 65-year-old woman in New York last year. This is also another marriage ceremony between two elderly men just last year. So there is crime also in the name of adoption. They come to a developing country like ours and they take our children. Next slide. And they take them home and they make them homosexuals. How, believe me, this, this child, these children, when they grow up, they become homosexuals themselves. Next slide. So uh, aid is also another subtle means which they use uh, to uh, propagate, propagate their message. And CEDAS, you know, the Swedish International Development Agency has clearly put on its website that it will include this agenda in its development cooperation with uh, the more than 70 countries worldwide with which it is working on the issue of aid. And they also give uh, 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 scholarship, free scholarship to young people from Africa and other developing countries. They take them to Sweden and teach them on promotion of homosexual lifestyle. We have come across two Ethiopian young men who have uh, gone to Sweden to get such an edu education. Next slide. This is a scholarship form and this is how they teach them. Now we come to the uh, spiritual health hazards. This is very important. Homosexuality doesn't necessarily have a, a physical problem, only it also has spiritual problem, and this is a very serious one. What does the Bible say? We are now coming across uh, people who are being ordained, especially in the West. This is an openly, Gene Robinson, an openly gay priest who has uh, who have been uh, uh, ordained as a bishop some eight years back. And another one, the next slide, Mary Glasspool, an American who has been ordained, a lesbian, an, op an openly lesbian woman who has been ordained. This is a marriage ceremony within the church, evangelical church, between two women. This is heartbreaking. God forgive us. And here you can see a recently uh, produced uh, film or movie which is entitled Eke Homo, Jesus the Homosexual. Can you believe it? They are saying that Jesus, uh, uh, I mean, called male apostles because he himself was a homosexual. That's what they are saying. Next slide. Here we see uh, President Barack Obama giving Medal of Freedom to two uh, people. The, this man, uh, Harvey Milk, was given uh, uh, the uh, honor in absentia. He's dead already. The other one is Billy Jean King. And they were given this highest award, American award, the Medal of Freedom, for the, uh, their role as agents of change in the fight for homosexual rights. They were given the highest honor in America. Next. So what was the scene of Sodom? There are now uh, theologians who have come up saying that the scene of Sodom is inhospitability, not a sexual, uh, I mean sexual perversion. And, but the Bible clearly says that these people, the uh, uh, people of Sodom and Gomorrah came, came to the Lord's house saying, please take out those men so that we may have sexual encounters with them, so that we may know them. The word know represents intimate sexual practice. And next slide. And the 
Bible clearly says in Leviticus 18.22, it's an abomination. It says, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with woman. It is an abomination. Say it out loud. It is, it is, nothing can change this law. It's already written there. The next slide. Leviticus uh, 20, 13. It says, if a man also lie with mankind as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Again? So the outcome is, I mean, it clearly is, uh, uh, I mean, it says that they shall surely be put to death, and their blood is upon themselves. It's a sin which deserves this. I'm not saying they should get death penalty, but I'm saying that the Bible clearly has put it. It's written there. And uh, the other slide, I mean, the other uh, word of God is Roman 1 27. It's clearly written that it's an indecent act. It's an indecent act. And the other uh, Bible verses, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Next slide, please. Leviticus 18.20, sorry, it says, if you defile the land, it will vomit you out. This is very important, especially for us Africans. When it, the land is defiled by sexual immorality, it will vomit out its people. Our people are seeking refuge in other countries. Maybe the reason is our lands are getting defiled so much by sexual immorality. Next slide, please. It's also a cause for a depraved mind. We have seen it already in Romans 1.27. Next slide. And in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 to 11, if you read, it says, male prostitutes nor homosexual offenders, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's clearly written there. They will not inherit the kingdom of God. Next slide. And uh, in uh, Jude uh, chapter 1, verse 7, it says the reason for uh, Sodom and Gomorrah to be burned with fire is because they gave themselves up to sexual immorality. It's not because they were inhospitable. So the judgment has come upon them because of that. And in Second uh, Peter chapter 2, verse 6, it clearly says they were burned. Sodom and Gomorrah was burned as an example, as an example of those, as, uh, as an example of what is going to happen to those who will not obey the word of God, who are be, be ungodly. So we have to take these issues very seriously. The next slide. World leaders nowadays are saying that we have to accept homosexuality. Here you can see uh, Barack Obama in a recent interview with ABC News that saying that homosexuality, it says Barack Obama supports same-sex marriage. How many of you have uh, heard this news? May I see your hands? God bless you. So. This, this is the first U.S. president to openly accept or endorse same-sex marriage. Next slide, please. David Cameron has clearly spoken to African leaders. Uh, in uh, the last Commonwealth Summit, he said, we will cut aid to your countries if you do not accept the homosexual agenda. He clearly said that. Next. Next. And Ban Ki-moon was recently in Addis, just a year back. He came to uh, the African Leaders Summit in Addis Ababa last January. And you know what he said in that big uh, meeting? He clearly told African leaders that you will end up like uh, leaders in the Arab Spring if you do not accept the homosexual rights issue and he said it clearly he said uh, 
the Arab Spring proved that leaders must listen to their people. Next slide. And Hillary Clinton has uh, clearly told a group of uh, diplomats in Geneva saying that we will cut aid to your countries unless you uh, endorse this homosexual rights issue. Please continue. But in Psalms chapter 2, it's clearly written that why do the nations conspire and the people plot in vain? It clearly says. It clearly says that uh, the kings of the earth take their uh, stand and the rulers, of, uh, the rulers come together against the Lord and against his anointed one. And they are saying, let's break their chains, the chain of the word of God, the chain of the truth in, in the days of this postmodern era. Continue, please. Continue with the slides. And the one enthroned in heaven laughs and the Lord scoffs at them. Praise the Lord. And he rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And he said, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy hill. Praise the Lord. Continue. Therefore, you kings, this is our message to Western leaders. Amen. Therefore, you kings, be wise, be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Amen. And kiss uh, the sun. Praise the Lord. Kiss the sun. Kiss the truth. Embrace the truth with Jesus. Praise the Lord. So our message to them is, next slide, please, kiss the sun. The world leaders should embrace the truth. Now we have come to the stage or to the era where people are saying there is no universal truth. Everybody has his own truth, creates his own truth. This is a postmodern teaching affecting the church itself. But our message for them is we have a universal truth which is called the word of God. Amen? This is unchangeable. This is the standard of our life. This word rules not only the earth, it rules the whole universe. Praise the Lord. Next slide. Now, then their battlefield for Western nations is Africa. Here is a, 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 a news from BBC. It says, gay rights, it says, and Africa, the new frontier. This is now the new battlefield. The new battlefield. But, you know, we Africans stand together in this Pamoja conference and tell them, bring it on. Let the fight come to us. But, and we Africans will make Africa a graveyard for homosexuality. <laughs> Africa will be a graveyard for the homosexual agenda. <laughs> Africa will be the, a graveyard for the homosexual agenda. <laughs> so we are here to fight that battle. We are living for this purpose. And if God wills, we are ready to die for that. Africa shall never be a breeding place for the homosexual agenda. It shall never be a breeding place for the homosexual lifestyle. Amen? It will be a place where this lifestyle will be buried. In the name of Jesus. The Bible clearly says in Deuteronomy 33:27. He will drive out your enemy in front of you saying, uh, destroy it. So it has come to us now. And it's time to destroy this homosexual agenda. I'm not saying we are going to destroy these people. Jesus loves sinners. We tell them the truth in love. We tell them that there is a possibility of coming out of that lifestyle. But we do not accept the lifestyle. It is an abomination in the sight of God, and we will never compromise. Africa will stand for, with this stand. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Next slide. So, some leaders have openly opposed this agenda.
We have a great respect for this great man of God, at Jonathan Mills. He said clearly that if you push us to accept this agenda in the name of aid, take your aid with you. Another leader, another leader, the Gambian president, a Muslim. You know what he said? We would rather eat grass, he said. <laughs> Next slide, please. He said, here is, here is what he said. The Gambian president, we would rather eat grass than accept homosexual behavior. Next slide, please. And finally here you see Ethiopian religious leaders who have come up together as to give their national response for the pressure that was exerted on Ethiopia to accept this homosexual agenda. And last June, June 9, 2012, all religious leaders in Ethiopia gathered together to uh, tell the world that Ethiopia shall never be a breeding place for the homosexual agenda. And they have clearly told the world that if you come to us with, uh, with your homosexual agenda in the name of aid, they openly said, let your aid come out of our noses, they say. And I have a short two or three minutes documentary which is talking about that. Can you please... Uh, Bring it. Okay. The church and the Ethiopian Islam. June 9, 2012. A historic day for Ethiopia and the rest of Africa. Ethiopian religious leaders from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Evangelical Church Fellowship of Ethiopia, the Makani Yesus Church, the Catholic Church, and the Ethiopian Islamic Affairs Council came together to raise their voice against the evil that's covering the entire world and is now trying to claim the whole of Africa. More than 2,000 people from all walks of life, government officials, professionals, artists, and the like gathered to denounce homosexuality in the new African Union Hall. The historic meeting was opened by a short word of prayer by His Holiness, the late Abuna Paulus, Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. This was followed by a religious song by an invited singer. Dr. Sigyum Antonios, Executive Director of United for Life Ethiopia, a non-governmental organization and organizer of the conference, delivered his presentation entitled Homosexuality, a human rights issue or a pinnacle of immorality, in which he clearly depicted the threats by Western powers to impose homosexuality on developing countries using aid as a means. Ethiopia shall be a graveyard for homosexuality, but not its breeding ground. <laughs> Ethiopia shall be a place where people from all other nations will be coming to seeking healing from their homosexual lifestyles. <laughs> Ethiopia shall present itself again as a beacon of hope and an emblem of freedom by leading the fight against homosexuality in the continent of Africa, making Africa also a graveyard for homosexuality. The reaction of the participants was exuberant. <laughs> A spectacular part of the meeting was the moment where a homosexual man who has started his journey to freedom 
gave his testimony on how he entered his previous lifestyle after he was sexually abused by his own uncle. This was a very emotional experience to participants as some were audibly crying. Following that was the historic speech by His Holiness, the late Abunapaulos, Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. He started by saying that he was appointed by all religious leaders to address the issue on their behalf as there was no need to waste time on their defeated agenda. He clearly stated that their response to the imposition by Western leaders to accept homosexuality as a human rights issue was a stern no. It's a sin and against the law of God, an abomination and a very strange act on a land which kept the law of God for centuries. The round of applause by participants was non-stop after each sentence. He then went on to read the resolution of the Ethiopian religious leaders which clearly reflected the stand of the Ethiopian people as a whole. That historic meeting ended by all religious leaders giving a press release to local and foreign journalists. Do you think that homosexuality is on the rise? There were local and foreign reactions to this meeting. Some websites run by gay rights groups also brought it out as headlines. One clear message which went out to all homosexual rights groups, both locally and abroad, was that Ethiopia shall never be a breeding ground for this evil called homosexuality. Ethiopia is a lost battle for homosexuals who are trying to control the rest of Africa through Ethiopia. Ethiopia is one of the four strategic gates of Africa and we the people are the gatekeepers. Gates are entry points either for good or bad. Therefore, we Ethiopians have a huge responsibility in protecting not only our nation but our continent Africa and the time has come for us now to test and prove the commitment. And by the grace of God, we shall fulfill this commitment and make our nation, the continent as a whole, a graveyard for this abominable behavior. We Ethiopians make the call to all nations to follow suit in denouncing this evil before it sets its dirty in their soils. God bless Ethiopia. God bless Africa. Africa shall be a graveyard for the homosexual agenda. Amen, Africa. It's not a coincidence that we are hosting this meeting at this crucial moment in history at the, uh, in the uh, uh, beautiful country of Nigeria. Nigeria and Ghana are one of the strategic spiritual gates of Africa. You know, there are four gates. In Africa, there are four spiritual gates in Africa. One is Ethiopia, the other is Ghana and Nigeria, the other is South Africa, and the other is Egypt. And we have failed in the southern part because South Africa has already endorsed the homosexual agenda. It has clearly written in its constitution, the first country in the whole world to clearly put it in its constitution that gays uh, can marry, they have a legal status. This is a blow for our battle. And I know God will give us the strength to fight this evil which is coming up. And now we are strengthening our gates and it's by God's grace that we are standing here in Nigeria, the other strategic gate of Africa, saying no to homosexuality, no. Never, never on our continent, never on our continent. If they bring it, let them bring it on. It will be killed here. It will be buried here in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The power and the spirit of God, which is working in all of us will do this. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the remaining 15 minutes, let let me just give you a highlight on the other issue which is affecting Africa as a human rights issue. I will finish as soon as possible. And this issue is the issue of abortion. I'll be as fast as possible. Bear with me, please. Because I was given 
two hours in, uh, when I was told to uh, present this issue, but uh, today I was told it is only one hour that I have. So uh, uh, I'll try to be fast as much as possible. The next slide, please. The crucial question with the issue of abortion is when does human life begin? And many people say that a pregnancy below the age of three months, three months is a collection of blood or it's a blob of jelly or tissue. But leaders in the uh, field of uh, genetics, biology and embryology have clearly stated that life below three months of age is clearly a human being, a human being. And this uh, leading researcher, a geneticist by the name Professor Jerome Lejeune, uh, has clearly said that when he was asked in the American Senate, next slide please, he clearly said that we human ha beings have a clear beginning. He said a very neat beginning which is none other than the time of conception. The moment when all genetic information needed to make one unique human being comes into one cell in a process called fertilization. So the start of human life is the time of fertilization, meaning when those two human uh, cells come together, the sperm and the egg conjugate, then it's that moment, the start of human life. And there are leading scientists, for example, Dr. Bradley in his book, Human Embryology, he said, fertilization is the moment when the life of a new individual begins. Praise the Lord. And another book, medical textbook, Biology of Gestation, it says conception is that wondrous moment. Conception is that wondrous moment when the life of a unique individual begins. Amen. And Dr. Alfred Bongiani, another uh, uh, scientist in uh, the University of Pennsylvania, he said, I submit that human life exists from the time of conception up to adulthood. So human life begins at fertilization. Here you see uh, the picture of uh, Dr. Bernard Nathanson. He, he, he is a leading uh, a figure in this field of uh, obstetrics and gynecology. He, wa he was once known as the abortion king, a known abortionist who performed more than 60,000 abortions. Now he's confessing. He's saying that uh, <clears throat> beyond question, he said, the unborn child is simply another human being, another member of the human community, indistinguishable in every way from any one of us. This is the truth. You know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Praise the Lord. There, is, there was once a human genome project, a project in which people tried to read the, I mean, the genetic information of one cell. And you know what happened? The next slide. In that uh, uh, project, they used computers, the most powerful computers on earth at that moment. They, they were, these computers were running 24-7, non-stop. And it took them five solid years to read the incredible story within a human cell. And you know what they found? The next slide. Each cell has over 8 billion bits of information. The sperm cell, 8 billion. The mother's egg, 8 billion. To totally they form... A, a, a cell which has eight, I mean 16 billion bits of information. It's out of this that each one of us are made. Praise the Lord. Next slide. Next slide. Continue, please. Next slide. So this is, this is truly a miracle which requires the strongest, which demands the strongest, the strongest possible legal protection. Now we come to the fetal development. The next slide, please. The Bible clearly says uh, in uh, Psalms 139, when my, uh, frame was not hid my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. This is David uh, praying. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. So. Even before the introduction of uh, ultrasound or electron microscope, 3,000 years ago, David said that there is an unformed 
body within the uh, uterus. Next slide. So during fertilization, a new human life begins and at fertilization, the color, the shoe size, the intelligence, even the sex and the eye color are determined. This is a scientific finding. And next slide, here you see a picture of uh, a human being at 30 hours of age, meaning one day and six hours of age. This is a fertilized egg at 30 hours, and at four days you can see the unformed body, which David was talking about, four days. And next, on the four weeks, at four weeks, you can see the heart, the heart of a human being starting beating. Next slide. Please click it. You can This is the heartbeat of a six-week-old fetus, one and a half weeks. Can you believe that? People tell us below three months of age, it's not a human being, but its heart is beating since, since day 18. Day 18, this is the heartbeat. Next, at six weeks, meaning 40 days, the, there is brain wave, brain wave, meaning the brain has started functioning at 40 days. Next slide. And at seven weeks, the baby is st swimming in its mother's womb. Swimming. We, we, we learn swimming in our mother's womb, not in any swimming pool. <laughs> God bless you. Extremely active at nine weeks. Nine weeks means two months and one week. So at that time, the baby is mo moving and is swallowing the fluid it which, in which it is swimming. If it swallows, it means it has stomach and uh, intestines. Next, this is an 11 week old, meaning a week before three months. You can see the baby has started breathing. You may ask, where does it get air? No, it's not breathing air, but it has, it, it has started practicing its lungs within its mother's womb, when before three months. And next slide, here you see the feet of an 11-week-old fetus. 11-week-old meaning below three months, a week before uh, it reaches three months. And look how beautiful these feet are. Next slide shows you in a, how small they are. In fact, the real size is, the, when you look at your, uh, the, 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 the nail of your little finger, two feet standing on this little finger. It's that size at 11 weeks, but it's perfectly formed. Praise the Lord. Now we, we have reached three months. Three months means uh, 12 weeks, and there the, 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 the fetus starts feeling pain. Unfortunately, many of the abortions are done at three months, and these children are being killed, experiencing excruciating pain. God forgive us. Next slide. This is a, a, a BBC News showing, telling us a three months old fetus walking in its mother's womb. Can you believe that? We are saying it's a collection of blood, but the child is walking. It's having a walk in its mother's womb. Next slide. 14 weeks, meaning uh, uh, 14 weeks is three months and a half. At this age, the baby's heart is beating very fast and is transmitting blood to other parts of the body. Next slide, please. This is at four months. Look how beautifully these uh, uh, legs are made. You can even see the blood vessels running down. And next slide. This is 18 weeks. 18 weeks means four months and two weeks. At four months and two weeks, you can even see the sex of the fetus. Here you can clearly see the, uh, it's a female. You know, you can insert cameras into the amniotic, uh, in the uh, uterine cavity and take pictures and videos, which I will show you later on. Next. Here is a, a, a story, an amazing story of a child born below the age of six months. Most people say, even health professionals say that 
uh, a child born below the age of six months is not uh, viable, meaning it, has, it doesn't have the capacity to live or exist by itself. But now God is trying to shame the wise by sending out such little children. You know, this is a five months and three weeks old child who was born some four years back in 2007, Amelia Sonia Taylor. When she was born, she was the size of a pen, you know, 23 centimeters long. Look at your pens without its uh, cap. And so the weight, the weight of this child is, on, can, you, can you guess? Uh, who, who says it's one kilo? How about half a kilo? It's, it's 283 grams. Can you believe that? And it survived. Because the owner of life said, live. Amen? And medical professionals were expecting this little girl would die. But she didn't die. She made it. So it's God who says live or die. We are not the ones who are saying that. Next slide, please. This is another child, Kenya King, who, who was born at 16 months. I mean, 16 weeks, sorry, uh, 19 weeks, sorry, six, uh, four weeks and three months, uh, three, uh, four months and three weeks. And she also survived. 30 years back, she was born and she lived. Next slide. 18 weeks, perfectly formed. Many children suck their thumbs after b being born. But, you know, the truth is they have started sucking their thumb in their mother's womb. This is a picture of a 16 weeks old child sucking its thumbs in its mother's womb. Next. The life of a human being starts even below, I mean, earlier than that. Because the Bible tells us in the next slide, in Jeremiah 1.5, it says, Before I formed you, I knew you. Amen? Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Each one of us have, has been known by God before we were even in our mother's womb. So we shouldn't meddle with the life of a human being. In fact, we are ordained to be priests or prime ministers or prophets in our mother's womb. That's what the Bible clearly says. Next slide. Please continue. Continue. So, if... If, if uh, this child is, if he is not alive, you know, they tell us these children are not alive. If he is not alive, why is not growing? Why is he growing? Ab abortion promoters tell us these children are not alive. If he is not alive, why is he growing? And if he is not a human b being, what kind of a being is he? What kind of, is he an animal? And they tell us also that he's not a child. If he's not a child, why does he suck his thumb? And our final question is, if he's alive, if he's growing, if he's a child, if he's a human being, why is it legal to kill such a child? Because may, we are asking this question because many foreign organizations organizations are working in Africa to legalize abortion. This is another leg of that dirty uh, evil that's coming to Africa. But today, those dirty feet will be cut by the Spirit of God. Amen? Now we come to the abortion techniques. I'll go through it quickly. The first type of uh, abortion is uh, what's known as DNC abortion. Next slide, please. This is DNC abortion. I mean, killing of a baby below the age of 11 weeks. 11 weeks meaning below three months. As you can see, it, it doesn't even, uh, I mean, it has its own legs, hands, this is the torso, you cannot see the head. It's not greater than the size of uh, a dime or uh, a quarter in the US. And it's very small, but it's fully formed. The next slide, please. The other is suction abortion. This is 
the type of uh, practice they I mean the type of abortion they practice legally in every country which uh, has adopted this practice and before abortion the child is like this after abortion this is the outcome the child is torn into pieces next slide the other is DNC abortion DNC abortion is abortion uh, at the age of four three to four months uh, of age and if I show it to you in form of pictures as you can see the abortionist takes uh, uh, a piece of I mean uh, 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 a forceps a sponge forceps and he tears apart the body part piece by piece here you can see taking off the leg then he takes off uh, the board the torso and the intestines he pulls out and finally he pulls out the head and the outcome is seen in the next slide here is the outcome body parts torn apart and the next slide here is the head can this be a human right issue tell me are these not humans but they are telling us this is the reproductive health right of women how can women get the right to kill their children they tell us it's a women's right, but it's a known fact that more than 50% of children in mother's wombs are women themselves. Don't they have rights? They have rights. So we have to respect that. Next slide. Salt poisoning abortion. They purposely poison them with salt. They know that these children are drinking while they are in their mother's womb, so they purposely inject a concentrated saline solution into the womb. And what happens is the baby drinks that and gets intoxicated. Next slide. So it dies a very painful days. Very painful days. Look how it burns the body. This is the outcome. How can somebody burn his own child like this? Next slide. Prostaglandin abortion is a chemically induced abortion. It causes contraction of the uterus even before the time has reached for it to get contracted. So it will kill the baby, suffocating it before its time. And the outcome is, as you can see it in the next slide, a baby thrown into the bucket after being taken out. Another is a chemical abortion using what's known as the abortion pill. Now it's very common in all African countries, and women swallow it or it's buried into their uh, uh, reproductive, uh, reproductive tract. And what it does is it detaches the placenta from the wall of the uterus, causing uh, uh, hunger. I mean, it, it, it kills the baby because of hunger. And it's very toxic. And this, this young girl, which you see here, is uh, killed by that drug. She died of that, uh, uh, si the side effect of that drug in 2003. Next slide, cesarean section abortion. This is an abortion which they perform after six months of pregnancy. What they do is they take the woman into the OR, they open her abdomen, they take out the child, and they leave it there to die, bleeding, crying. They don't even tie the uh, umbilical cord. This is done in Africa, in many centers. Do you know that? So women are paying money for their children to be killed. This has to stop. Africa has to rise and stop this murder. Next abortion, next type of abortion is a partial birth abortion. And if you see it in the form of, uh, in, in pictures, you know what they do? It's a late term abortion. Uh, a child at the nine months of age in its mother's womb, they kill it using this technique. What they do is, they rotate the child and they pull it out using its legs and they take it out uh, up to the neck and they uh, they let the head to stay in the birth canal you know why they take a scissors and they insert it at the back of the skull they open the skull and they suck out the brain and they kill the child in such a way and this is an abominable and there are people who are practicing this in the name of human rights in the name of women's rights and the outcome is as you can see in the next slide and this is 
how the child dies, human garbage. This is a product of a one morning's abortion activity in a hospital in Paris. Next slide. So this is a legal abortion at 22 weeks, meaning four months, uh, five months and two weeks. Next slide. 22 weeks, another uh, legal abortion. Another slide. Next slide, please. This is at 24 weeks, six months. This child could have lived if we had fought for it. Look, these are the outcomes of a late-term abortion. So, men and women of God, shouldn't we fight this evil? Africa, shouldn't we fight this evil? Shouldn't we fight it? I pray that God may raise men and women fighters in the land, the continent of Africa, who will push out this agenda and push it out back to its owner, the devil himself. It's not a human rights issue. Next, next slide, please. Continue. You know, there is what's known as human body trafficking. You know, they, they sell body parts of these human beings, little humans. You know, the, their brains are sold at the rate of a thousand dollars. You may ask why it's sold to, to, to treat somebody's brain. For example, a person with Alzheimer's disease, they treat it taking the brain of this child. And it, it, it may require four or up to eight brains to treat one, one human uh, I mean, human being, an adult. And look how, how, how uh, uh, cruel these things are. And they sell the ice at a rate of $100, and the torso is sold at $500. It's a big business. Abortion is a business. It's a, a, an industry in the range of billions of dollars. They tell us they are working, doing it for the sake of women's health, but they are doing it for the purpose, the whole sole purpose of getting money. Money, it's mammon. Mammon is behind it. Next slide. You, you may ask me, uh, this child is in the OR. They may, you may ask what are they doing with, with this child. You know what they are doing? It's a kitchen. It's a kitchen. The next slide. They are preparing it for food. Look. Next slide, please. Look, somebody preparing a meal using fetal parts. C continue, please. Look, look, somebody feasting on human flesh. It's a practice now in the eastern part of uh, the globe. And continue, please. Next slide. You know, human brains, fetal brains are packed and sold in supermarkets. To, for the preparation of porridge, you know, soup. Next slide. Look, women buying it from supermarkets. And we, we are living in such an era where truth has been for a second. And people are living in the days of the judges. Look at soup made of, out of human parts in, in China. And in fact, it's, you can get it in the form of a menu. You can buy it. it. It's very expensive if you go there and ask for it. Look, another uh, soup. You know what this is? These are capsules made of human flesh. Fetal parts dried and ground. And then they are prepared in the form of capsules and sent out to different countries. For this. They say... They in, it enhances the sexual uh, capacity of men, uh, and it makes them more muscular. And this is a news which we recently, we recently got from the internet. This was public news some six or eight months back. And uh, it was produced in China and was confiscated in South Korea, these capsules. Abortion, they tell us, is safe, but it's not safe. There, are, there is nothing called a safe abortion. There is no safe abortion. Every abortion has its own side effects. It, it causes perforation of the uterus, bleeding, infection, 
In some cases, it causes breast cancer. You know, if you want to avoid breast cancer, young ladies, avoid abortion. One proven, proven cause of breast cancer is abortion. It causes an increase in the risk of breast cancer up to three to four times. But abortion groups deny this fact. They don't want to listen to this fact. And we are, in Africa, we are coming up with cases of breast cancer at an age of 30, 33 years. I have seen cases, operated on, the, on those cases. Women with breast cancer at such an early age. Can you believe that? With the, another, the next slide, please. So, it has spiritual complications beyond uh, uh, the physical complications. Again, I want to stress the uh, complications, spiritual hazards or spiritual impacts innocent bloodshed is causing. In Genesis 4, 11, it says, now you are under a curse and driven from the ground. This is what was told to Cain after he killed his brother Abel. Abel was the first man to be killed on earth, whose, blood, his, whose innocent blood was shed on earth. And it, it causes curse. Anyone who sheds innocent blood is cursed. Genesis 9, 6. Please, Africa, don't forget this, this verse. Genesis 9, 6. It says, whoever, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. God made man in his own image. So we shouldn't mess up with blood. Blood is very serious. We are saved by blood. The blood of Jesus. Next slide. Second Samuel chapter 21 verse 1. If you see, if you read there, we see the story of David and his nation suffering from famine. When he asked God, God told him it's because of the innocent blood which Saul shed on the earth. God said that. And he had to repent for that innocent blood before famine was uh, removed from the land. So we Africans are suffering from famine because of the curse that's caused by innocent bloodshed that's taking place in our lands. In the name of abortion, in the name of racial conflicts, tribal conflicts, wars, and so on. Next slide, please. Ezekiel 35.6, it says... Uh, if you, uh, it says, since you did not hate bloodshed, bloodshed will pursue you. If you do not hate bloodshed, bloodshed will pursue you. Next slide. And Hosea 4.2, it says, bloodshed follows bloodshed. Blood begets more blood. Any innocent blood we shed, it will bring more blood in the name of uh, war, tribal conflicts, and so on. And continue, next slide. Proverbs 20, 24, 11, it says, this is a message we have for you as Africans. It says, rescue those being laid away today, hold back those staggering towards slaughter. This is the gospel. This is the gospel. We have to fight for the salvation of those human, innocent human beings in their mother's womb. As we sit here, as even now, many thousands of clinics all over Africa are killing babies right now. Right now. And the only power that can stop this bloodshed is the church. The church of Jesus Christ. And we have to rise up and fight to stop this bloodshed. Next slide, please. And uh, uh, Proverbs 31, verse 8 says, Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. We have to do advocacy uh, for these children. We have to, to stand up and speak for themselves. This is not optional. It's a command given to us by the Almighty. If we do not obey this, it will ha have serious consequences. We have to speak up for these children. Next slide. Uh, I have a three minutes video, then we, we will uh, pray after that. I, I, I thank you for bearing with me uh, uh, all this time. 
So please, uh, Meret, uh, project that video as soon as possible. This is a, a film produced by Professor Bernard Nathanson. The, man the I unborn child, the fetus, uh, was something in the uterus, but it was really an article of faith as to whether or not it was a human being and whether or not that human being had any unique personal qualities. But the whole story has changed since the 1970s. It was at that time that the science of fetology exploded in the medical community. It exploded by means of the introduction of great new technologies such as ultrasound imaging, electronic fetal heart monitoring, fetology, hysteroscopy, radioimmunochemistry, and a host of other dazzling technologies which today constitute in fact the corpus of the science of fetology. Real-time ultrasound, that is imaging of the child in motion, has been available as a clinical tool since 1976. The room for the ultrasound examination consists of a conventional examining table as well as the ultrasound imaging device itself, a bulky appearance from the victim's vantage point. Ultrasound imaging has allowed us to see this. And so for the first time, we are going to watch a child being torn apart, dismembered, disarticulated, crushed, and destroyed by the unfeeling steel instruments of the abortionist. What we are looking at here forward, is a depiction forward. of the development a of this forward. child in finally the abortion instruments themselves. The abortionist first introduces the most slender of these instruments into the cervix to dilate the cervix, turns the instrument around to a slightly larger end, introduces that end, and then works his way through the various graduated, increasingly larger ends of this dilating instrument. He will then take the instrument known as the suction apparatus, which is opened, it is in a sterile container prior to the actual use of the instrument, and then this will be inserted through the dilated cervix up into the uterus and will then puncture the sac surrounding the child, allowing the amniotic fluid to escape. The ear, the nose of the child here, the mouth of the child here, and we can even look at the ventricle of the brain here. This is a fluid-filled space in the brain. It is receiving the thumb of the child. Uh, the child, again, uh, is moving quietly in its sanctuary. Now, much more agitated movements. The child is now moving in a much more purposeful manner. It, its orientation changes from time to time. It is rearing again here. Now, the suction of the screen is This is the a picture, a movie showing the child trying to escape. To escape the three months the fluid has old broken, child trying to escape when he's going to be killed. has been disrupted that the tip will actually come against the child. But we can see the tip moving back and forth 
as the abortionist seeks the child's body. Once again, we see the child's mouth wide open in a silent scream in this particular freeze frame. This is the silent scream of a child threatened imminently with extinction. Now the heart rate has Me speeded up dramatically and the child's so movements are violent. At this a point. child when he's un under a threat aggression. to be killed through abortion, he will rear away, he will try to escape one. He will, uh, he will cry out. This is what the known abortionist is saying. He will cry out. He called it a, a silent scream of the innocent child. And his heartbeat is uh, also increasing. And the heart rate also increases. Freely in the uterus, here are the shanks or blades of the instrument coming across here. So uh, it's an for me. Abortion is a terrorism act, an act of terror. And going into the, that uh, sacred place, the woman's uterus, and killing an innocent child. In ways you can see here, all these children are dying in the name of women's rights in the name of reproductive health right. There are people fighting for this cause, saying that we should stop abortion. So uh, we have finished, uh, I ask us all to uh, spend a few moments in prayer. Uh, if you don't mind, I would uh, ask you to all stand please, and this is a sacred uh, holy moment, and the Lord wants us, each one of us to respond, to respond. Come on, the